mantras of our Lord Sri Aurobindo. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, when you see light, that is vision. When you see light entering into you, that is experience. When light settles in you and brings illumination and knowledge, that is realization. With always our love and blessings, says our Lord, Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo's Savitri, Book 4, The Book of Birth and Quest, Canto 2, The Growth of the Flame. Page 408 A land of mountains and wide sun-beat plains and giant rivers pacing to vast seas, a field of creation and spiritual hush, silence swallowing Life's acts into the deeps of thought's transcendent climb and heavenward leap, a brooding world of reverie and trance, filled with the mightiest works of God and man, where nature seemed a dream of the divine. And beauty and grace and grandeur had their home, harbored the childhood of the incarnate flame. Over her watched millennial influences and the deep godheads of a grandiose past looked on her and saw the future's godheads come as if this magnet drew their powers unseen. Earth's brooding wisdom spoke to her still press, mounting from mind's last peaks to mate with gods, making Earth's brilliant thoughts a springing boat to dive into the cosmic vastnesses, the knowledge of the thinker and the seer saw the unseen and thought the unthinkable, opened the enormous doors of the unknown, rent man's horizons into infinity. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo, taken from the compilations of the works of our Lord Sri Aurobindo, book The Psychic Being, Section 1 The Psychic Being, Its Nature and Function. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the psychic has two aspects there is the soul principle itself which contains all soul possibilities and there is the psychic personality which represents whatever the soul power is developed from life to life or put forward for action in our present life formation. The psychic being usually expresses itself through its instruments, mental, vital, and physical, it tries to put as much as it can of its own stamp on them as possible, but it can seldom put on them the full psychic stamp unless it comes fully out from its rather secluded and overshadowed position 
and takes into its hands the direct government of the nature. It can then receive and express all spiritual realizations in its own manner, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. At the beginning, the soul in nature, the psychic entity whose unfolding is the first step towards a spiritual change, is an entirely wheeled part of us, although it is that by which we exist and persist as individuals in nature. A Lord Sri Aurobindo says, the other parts of our natural composition are not only mutable but perishable. But the psychic entity in us persists and is fundamentally the same always. It contains all essential possibilities of our manifestation but is not constituted by them. It is not limited by what it manifests nor contained by the incomplete forms of the manifestation nor tarnished by the imperfections and impurities the defects and deprivations of the surface being. It is an ever pure flame of the divinity in things and nothing that comes to it, nothing that enters into our experience can pollute its purity or extinguish the flame. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, this spiritual stuff is immaculate and luminous. And because it is perfectly luminous, it is immediately, intimately, directly aware of truth of being and truth of nature. It is deeply conscious of truth and good and beauty because truth, good and beauty are akin to its own native character, forms of something that is inherent in its own substance. It is aware also of all that contradicts these things, of all that deviates from its own native character of falsehood, evil, ugly and unseeming. But it doesn't become these things, nor is it touched or changed by these opposites of itself, which so powerfully affect its outer instrumentation of mind, life and body. For the soul, the permanent being in us, puts forth and uses mind, life and body as its instruments, undergoes the envelopment of their conditions, but it is and greater than its members. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, if the psychic entity had been from the beginning unveiled, unknown to its ministers, not a secluded king in a screen chamber, the human evolution would have been a rapid soul outflowering, not the difficult, checkered and disfigured development it now is. But the wheel is thick and we know not the secret light within us, the light in the hidden crypt of the heart's innermost sanctuary. Let me repeat. A Lord Sri Aurobindo says, if the psychic entity had been from the beginning unveiled and known by its ministers, not a secluded king in a screened chamber, the human evolution would have been a rapid soul outflowering, not the difficult, checkered and disfigured development it is now. But the wheel is thick. And we know not the secret light within us, the light in the hidden crypt of the heart's innermost sanctuary. Intimations rise to our surface from the psyche, but our mind does not detect these sources. It takes them for its own activities because before even they come to the surface, they are clothed in mental substance. Thus, ignorant of their authority, it follows or does not follow them according to its bent or turn at the moment. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says, If the mind obeys the urge of the vital ego, 
then there is little chance of the psyche at all controlling the nature or manifesting in us something of its secret spiritual stuff and native moment or if the mind is overconfident to act in its own smaller light attached to its own judgment will an action of knowledge then also the soul will remain veiled and quiescent and wait for the mind's further evolution a large yurbindu says for the psychic part within is there to support the natural evolution and the first natural evolution must be the development of body life and mind successively and these must act each in its own kind or together in their ill assorted partnership in order to grow and have experience and live on a lot says the soul gathers the essence of all our mental vital and body experiences and assimilates it for the further evolution of our existence in nature but this action is occult and not obtruded on the surface in the early material and vital stages of the evolution of the being there is indeed no consciousness of soul there are psychic activities but the instrumentation the form of these activities are vital and physical or mental when the mind is active for even the mind so long as it is primitive or is developed but still too external does not recognize their deeper character it is easy to regard ourselves as physical beings or beings of life or mental beings using life and body and to ignore the existence of the soul altogether for the only definite idea that we have of the soul is of something that survives the death of our bodies but what this is we do not know because even if we are conscious sometimes of its presence we are not normally conscious of its distinct reality nor do we feel clearly the direct action in our nature a large yurbindu says the soul or psychic is immutable only in the sense that it contains all the possibilities of the divine within it but it has to evolve them and in its evolution it assumes the form of a developing psychic individual evolving in the manifestation the individual prakriti taking part in the evolution it is the spark of the divine fire that grows behind the mind vital and physical by means of the psychic being until it is able to transform the prakriti of ignorance into a prakriti of knowledge this evolving psychic being is not therefore at any time all that the soul or essential psychic existence bears within it it temporalizes and individualizes what is eternal in potentiality transcendent in a sense in this projection of the spirit a large yurbindu says the central being is the being which presides over the different births one after another but it is still unborn for it does not descend into the being but is above it it holds together the mental vital and the physical being and all the various parts of the personalities it controls the life either through the mental being and the mental thought and will or through the psychic whichever may happen to be most in front or most powerful in nature if it does not exercise its control then the consciousness is in a great disorder and every part of the personality acts for itself so that there is no coherence in the thought feeling or action the psychic is not above but behind its seat is behind the heart its power is not knowledgeable but an essential or a spiritual feeling 
It has the clearest sense of the truth, a sort of inherent perception of it, which is of the nature of the soul perception and soul feeling. It is our inmost being and supports all the others, but it is also much wielded by them and has to act upon them as an influence rather than by its sovereign right of direct action. Its direct action becomes normal and preponderant only at a high stage of development or by yoga. It is not the psychic being which you feel gives you the intuitions of things to be or warns you against the results of certain actions. That is some part of the inner being, sometimes the inner mental, inner vital or it may be the inner subtle physical purusha. The inner being, inner mind, vital or the subtle physical knows much that is unknown to the outer mind, the outer vital physical for it is a more direct contact with the secret forces of nature. Our Lord Sri Aurobindo says the psychic is the inmost being of all, a perception of truth which is inherent in the deepest substance of the consciousness, a sense of the good, true, beautiful, the divine is its privilege. The soul is the witness, upholder, experiencer, but it is the master only in theory. In fact, it is not master anism so long as it consents to the ignorance. For that is a general consent which implies that Prakriti gambles with the Purusha and does pretty well what she likes with him. But he wants to get back his mastery, make the theoretical practical, he needs a lot of tapasya to do it. The psychic has always been wheeled consenting to the play of mind, vital and physical, experiencing everything through them in the ignorant mind, vital and physical. How then can it be that they are bound to change at once, when it just takes the trouble to whisper or say, let there be light? They have a tremendous negating power and can refuse and do refuse point black. The mind resists with an obstinate persistency in argument and a constant confusion of ideas. The vital with the fury of bad will, aided by the mind's obliging reasonings on its side. The physical resists with an obstinate inertia and crash fidelity to old habit. And when they have done, the general nature comes in and says, what you are going to get free from me so easily, not if I know it. And it besieges and throws back the old nature on you again and again, as long as it can, says our Lord Sri Aurobindo. <laughs>